Welcome back to the Porsche Car Whisperer video. If this is your first time checking out my channel, my name is Mason Gilcrest and I cover everything Porsche. And today I am super excited because I have two Cayennes here. We got a model year 23 and a model year 24. And today we're going to be going over what are some of the largest changes we can find for the sixth generation Porsche Cayenne. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Porsche has done a tremendous amount of testing on this brand new Cayenne. They actually did about two and a half million miles of testing across four different continents. So they have really, really put this car through the test in as many possible situations as possible. Street driving, off-road driving, cold weather driving. So this is how Porsche really dials in their product. Okay, so we're going to go and start here with the exterior of the Cayenne. Then we're going to work our way here to the inside is where that's right, feel the largest changes here on this model year 2024 Cayenne. So just looking right here at the front fascia, you can notice quite a few differences. It looks a lot more aggressive than the previous generation. And then we have these horizontal slats that are even more aggressive, painted in graphite gray. Now coming over here to the turn signals, they are more integrated into those horizontal slats on the side air vents opposed to the previous generation. Now Porsche has, I believe, stood the car up and making it stand a little bit more proud and strong as they kind of lifted this front up here. And as what Porsche calls it, the power doll is even more aggressive here on the hood. And when you're sitting inside the car driving it, you can see a lot more aggressive front fenders as well opposed to the previous generation. Now, one of the largest things we're going to see is the headlights. And now Porsche is offering a standard Matrix headlights, whereas in the past, that was an option. Now they even have a new offering, which is going to be the HD Matrix headlights, which has 16,000 individual lights. You've heard that right, 16,000. That's nuts. In the past, we had standard LED PDLS headlights. Now, going here to the power plant, Porsche has updated it or upgraded it, as they always do. And we now have still that 3 liter V6. But now we've upped it 13 horsepower up to 348 and 36 foot pounds of torque opposed to the previous generation. And now for the Cayenne S, a big, big update. No longer a V6. V8, yes, a V8 is now going to be offered for the Cayenne S with 468 horsepower. So Porsche's really upped their game for the Cayenne S. And they've even been able to optimize the fuel economy across the world as this is something that we have to do to be able to still produce a V8 is have optimal fuel economy. Now going here to the transmission, it's still that standard 8-speed Tiptronic transmission, but Porsche's dialed it in and optimized it just a little bit more, as well as the PTM system, which is the Porsche Traction, tra traction Management System. It's even going to have a little bit more dialed in each drive mode that you select. And that brings me to another point. There's a lot more standard equipment here for the client for model year 2024. We have lane change assist this standard, driver memory, comfort access, LED matrix headlight, drive mode switch selector, wireless charger, which we'll be getting on the inside with cooling as standard, lane keep assist. That's a lot of new standard options here for the brand new 2024 Cayenne. So that kind of helps offset the pricing as now the car starts at about a $79,000 price tag. And after you option it, we're looking mid uh, or high 80s to maybe even mid 90s. But there's a lot more offerings now on this new Cayenne. Now going to the side, we have brand new wheel offerings. There's actually 12 new wheel offerings and Porsche even has now uh, a 22 inch all season tire that it is going to be offered that they that actually developed in house. In the past, you're getting that 22 inch wheel. You had to get a summer tire. So that has gone away. Now going to the chassis, Porsche has also dialed that in. As standard, we also have HASM, or Porsche Active Suspension Management, and now it's a two-valve technology, which helps it, the car be even more comfortable when you're cruising around, and even more aggressive when you want to put the car in either Sport or Sport Plus. So this is very, very exciting, and again, like I said, that's now scattered. In the past, you've had to option that. I'm going to notice a huge change when looking at the side of the brand new Kaya as it's virtually unchanged. Maybe one of the only ways you'll be able to tell a difference is by looking at the wheels as we have, again, those 12 new released wheels that Porsche is now offering. Now going to the back, that's where we're going to notice a 
drastic difference as well. Now, if you're following the brand new Cayenne, you're going to be able to tell because there's some pretty big changes, starting here with the 3D taillight that Porsche is now offering, opposed to this previous generation where it's all going to be enclosed. And the license plate has also been relocated. On the previous gen, we had it here in the rear hatch. Now it's actually down in the rear bumper. So Porsche has moved it down. That's also going to make where you open the Cayenne in a different spot. Before, it was right above the license plate. It still is, but it's just quite a bit lower than it was in the past. They put that now they still have the exact same exhaust tip and plastic rear fascia down here below. The rear spoiler is still exactly the same and the glass as well as the windshield wiper. So we're not going to notice any huge differences with that. Now the inside is where Porsche has completely transformed the car. So here from the inside is where we're going to find the biggest number of changes on this newly released 2024 Cayenne. The first thing I noticed is how the instrument cluster is all digital, where in the past we had an analog and a digital aspect. This reminds me a lot of the Taycan with this nice 12.6 inch curved display. And there's a lot of different screens that you can change everything to. Very Taycan-esque in my opinion. Now we have the newest and latest generation steering wheel, which is actually derived from the 992 with a drive mode selector. In the past, you had to get sports chrono package to be able to get a drive mode selector. And even if you did, the drive mode selector looked different. This looks the same as it does on the Taycan. So you can switch through all the different drive modes. And you'll see here on the center display, as soon as I switch it, it's also changing the suspension as part of that chasm system with that new two valve system, which we're gonna be testing here in a moment on a quick short drive. So that's pretty slick. Now sitting here, those front fenders as I talked about earlier, you can see how aggressive they look. There's almost a line going through them and it really gives me more of a aggressive feel, kind of like the Taycan or the 718 or even the 911. They're just a lot more pronounced. Now, the biggest change that's actually derived from the Taycan is the drive mode selector here. The first car that actually had this was the 918 Spider, but now instead of having it here in the center console with a big shifter, now we've got this sleek little um, shifter here with a P button to put it in park, so no more e-brake like we used to have. And then we also have an engine start and stop button, where in the past we actually had to turn it over. So those are some pretty drastic changes um, that we have now on the client. No more official e-brake that we used to have. That automatically uh, sets the e-brake. Now, the dash is completely redesigned as well. These air vents are quite a bit different than they were in the past. This trim is new. The dash is actually taller and longer, very Taycan-y to me. We have the 12.3-inch beautiful display. Looks a lot more snappy than it was in the past. Just seems to be a lot quicker. There's also the option to have a passenger display here on the side, which is derived from the Taycan as well. So I think that's a pretty nice add if you can get it. It's currently on soft sale, but once it comes back, I think it'd be cool to add that. Now the center console, again, is completely redesigned. No more shifter well, that had the AC controls around the outside. Now it's going to be right here. We've got the AC controls with a little switch or a little dial here to turn up the volume. Now when you push it, the entire screen actually pushes down. So I find that pretty interesting. That's quite a difference than we had in the past. We have this nice wireless charger in here. That's actually going to be cool because in the past, if you had a Taycan, let's say, that the, your phone in the center console may overheat. Now with this cooling feature, that's awesome. We also have two USB-C ports in there as well. In the past, they were going to be here in the center console. Cup holders virtually look the same, but now we've got this nice place to put your phone. I know in the past, a lot of people were like, where do I put my phone? So a lot of people were putting it in the cup holder. Now we've got that, which is a nice, nice add. Now in the past, we had a clock up here in the dash, no matter what. You either had just the standard with no sports chrono with an analog clock, or you had the sports chrono, which gave you the drive mode switch and gave you an analog second hand and a digital clock there on the dash. That has been eradicated, I guess you could say. Now it's just kind of straight across. This roof console is quite a bit changed as well. So now it's black and sleek, and there's not near as many buttons. In the past, we had a bunch of whole link buttons, uh, dull lights. We had lighting up here as well. That is now gone. Now we've just got a series of dull lights. And then we also have the shade and the ability to open and close the panoramic sunroof with an SOS button. So I like the looks of this 
a lot better. Just makes it look a lot more sleek. Now here on the uh, doors, the lever to open up the door is different. In the past, we had like a little U-shape. Now that's gone. That was just a sleek little um, thing to open it here. So that's that's a pretty nice add. But other than that, to me, the seats feel exactly the same. This car has got the 14-way seats, just like the car here sitting next to us. So again, this has been quite a bit optimized with this new PCM screen. So now I'm going to take the car for a quick drive, and we're just going to feel those that increase in diameter of the tires and go through the different drive modes and that up in power to see how this car performs. Okay, so let's go ahead and finally take this Cayenne here for a spin and see how she differs opposed to the previous generation Cayenne. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up here. I'll tell you this, it certainly feels different just pressing a button to start a Porsche besides the all-electric Taycan. Now putting it into gear is gonna feel very similar, which it does, it feels a little bit strange, probably just because I'm so used to having the gear selector here in the center, but it definitely has a different feel to it. So let's go ahead and see what she's got. Now, as I discussed earlier, we do have this drive mode selector here as standard, which I think is a nice, nice option to have as in the past, we had to get what's called the sports chrono package to be able to even get this drive mode selector. And I'll tell you this, I'm going to put the car in sport. It's going to automatically turn on that two valve suspension, which is the PASM suspension. And I'll tell you this, it feels, feels very, very good. Maybe even a little bit more aggressive than I've seen in the past from a, from a Cayenne. So I'm going to go ahead and accelerate a little bit here in sport mode and see how she feels. Okay, yeah, this car feels quite a bit sportier than it has in the past opposed to just the overall aggressiveness. And looking at this rev counter, that's all digital. That's certainly a new look here for me because I'm just so used to that in the Taycan, but not with anything else that has a digital display. Now, of course, this PCM is all, all the same, but it just seems a lot snappier and there is quite a bit of new functions. So there is a new function called um, the in-car video where now we can actually watch a video here on the center screen so that's a pretty slick ad we'll also be able to see the apple carplay some of the functions such as phone calls now as part of the instrument cluster before it was just going to be on that pcm screen so that's going to be a pretty nice ad i'm going to make a, a a later video talking about all these new smaller nuances of the car it's just not something that i can put all together in one video. So I'll show you guys how some of this stuff works at a later date. But I'll tell you this, I like this new car, I think maybe more than I thought. Definitely feels different when you push this center panel and it's all, the entire panel, almost as if it has a spring on it. So that's certainly a different feel. But the car feels really aggressive and very, very nimble. And I think this new suspension certainly has something to do with that. Now in the past, you could shift with that center shifter that is, of course, gone away. Now, to put the car in full manual mode, you're actually going to have to put the drive all the way down. You're going to have to sit and hold it. Now, it's going to be in manual shift mode is now going to be enabled. So, I'll tell you this. It certainly feels good here. I'm going to test this corner, see how she takes it. That's pretty good. I have to admit, with the car in sport mode, it definitely feels a lot more aggressive. We talked about the Tiptronic transmission earlier being a little bit more aggressive too. I feel like I can feel that as well while driving this Cayenne. It just feels a lot snappier and a look quite a bit more dialed in than the previous generation. Stopping power again is going to have the same brakes on the standard models. Cayenne S is going to have increased brake size. But I'll tell you this, like I said, very, very aggressive. Transmission feels quite a bit snappier. Now this car has some optional bits such as adaptive cruise control. Some of you may have saw that from that rear fascia when I was showing that off earlier. Uh, so that's something we're gonna test at a later date as well. But uh, just the turning feels amazing as I take these corners. Wow. I'll tell you this though, it certainly feels weird not having a clock there in the dash. I'm so used to that with the Cayenne in the past but I do love these brand new fenders that we talked about earlier. They just look so aggressive as I'm sitting here looking down the hood. So overall, the quick little drive, absolutely love the new car. I think more than I, I initially thought. Um, sometimes I'm a little bit old school and I like the old analog look and feel, but 
this new car drives certainly better than the previous generation. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys, just showing you some of the differences from the previous generation Cayenne to the new generation model year 2024. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, go ahead and just leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. As always, I really appreciate you guys' support. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.